All right, I'd like to introduce our very special guest today, uh, comedian Bob Rubin. Bob, thanks for joining us today. Somebody's done their homework. Bob, <laughs> thank you for calling me Bob. You know, some people still call me by my old podcasting monic- uh, handle, really, which is uh, Seabiscuit. But thank you for thank you for calling, <laughs> calling me Bob. And, you know, um, I just want to say that it's so nice to talk to anybody. When I signed up for this space flight mission, I thought I was just repairing an old communication satellite. Here I am 16 months later, still stuck in this tin can. Sure, we're getting on each other's nerves, but I love these guys. We're all scientists up here, boys. Don't you worry about a thing. Nothing's going to drop down on top of you during this interview. And uh, I just want to say, if you can hear me okay, there's a 70-second delay out here in space. So if I answer a question that you've already asked, I apologize in advance. We'll make sure not to ask that question. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Um, The the first question we usually ask our guests, um, because it's it's germane to our times, is um, how has this pandemic affected your um, your normal life? Well, now everybody feels more like I do. (laughs) (laughs) I think staying indoors for long stretches of time. Sleeping maybe 17 hours a day, eating beans from a can like a hobo. You know, for a while there, I wasn't even sure there was a pandemic. <laughs> Just less people walking by on the street, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. L- less people walking by on the street. And, uh, well, it's fun to do this uh, show with you guys because this is an example of what it's like when your brain turns to goo. I think that's the most... Uh, uh, dramatic side effect of the pandemic is everybody's brain is atrophied. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm dealing with the most, I think. What about you guys? Yeah, we um, so we started our podcast a couple of months ago, and it was just pretty much the two of us um, discussing albums that we liked. And I jokingly said to Aaron, wouldn't it be cool if we had like famous people come on and talk to us? And like, here we are two months later. <laughs> go ahead go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> so i mean i can't complain too much other than that we're out of work but um yeah. at least we're having some fun don't be so humble i did some uh i did some uh homework on my own uh and i, I just saw you your podcast is voted most likely first podcast to be heard on mars by the prestigious followers of roy hibley so I wanted to congratulate. <laughs> so, yeah, we try not to brag. <laughs> we'll try to stay humble on here. Uh, but Esoterica originally aired in 1969, and it was called Tricky Dick, and it was broadcast as an experiment run by the CIA. Then later in '74, this podcast graduated Lincoln High School and moved to Hollywood. After brief stints on the dating game and Barnaby Jones. This podcast found itself out of work with a hundred dollar a day heroin habit. Enter a young actress by the name of Fawn Bafferton. That's as far as I got. But you do have you you do have quite a history. (laughs) We do. It's a sordid story. (laughs) There's layers like an onion. Where are you guys? Uh, We are located south of Boston. Oh, nice man! I love Boston. I'd like to go back and play uh, the whole New England area when I, uh, you know, when the earth opens back up, you know, mm. uh, who knew it would close for repairs, but I guess it's long overdue. I know you, you picked the perfect time to come back out. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. I know. Oh, uh, you know, it's funny about 12 years ago, I had the opportunity to do a, a, a comedy special and, uh, I got together with my managers at the time and I said, fellas, maybe we should wait till there's a pandemic. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, if you're going to put something out on Netflix, now is the time to do it because you got a, a, a wrapped audience with nothing else to do. Yeah. And then I just got a good, good word this morning from Netflix. They signed me up for 40, uh, 40 new specials that will be done in the next 1600 years. So pretty excited about that. <laughs> Right now, I have plenty of time to fill the material. Working on that. That actress' name, by the way, was Fawn Bafferton. 
Bon Bafferton. Bon Bafferton. Bon Bafferton, uh, best known for her Prell commercial. So oh you guys. Prell. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard the word Prell in so long. Uh, my grandmother. My partner has. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what? You're south of Boston? How far south? Uh, we're about uh, what, 20 miles south yeah. of the city. 20 miles south. In between Boston and Plymouth, if you're familiar with the oh, area. Oh, man. Yeah, I had so many good times. Uh, of course, you know, I've been doing stand-up for almost 61 years. And uh, back in the 40s, man, playing uh, Boston and the surrounding area, a lot of fun. Of course, a lot of great comedians came out of there, too, you know. Yeah, I was uh, I was telling someone a story recently. Um, years and years ago, I was at a comedy club after work, and uh, Dane Cook was um, just – out there starting his act and i made the mistake of telling him he did a really good bit so i <laughs> i encouraged him early on well you're responsible huh yeah yeah i'll <laughs> take the blame <laughs> well god bless you somebody had to come forward with an explanation and i think that's one of the biggest things happening uh during this pandemic is we're getting to the bottom of things and um Things are going to change when we go back, which is nice, you know, because I don't like fucking things up twice. So if everything changes, maybe we can do it right. Something up twice. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I know you got a lot of kids listening, and uh, I'd like to retract that statement and say, you know, uh, I think it's uh, a shame to go out and screw things up twice. So I'm happy that we got a big reset happening right now. Do you think that there will be a massive change? Do you think that people will be more courteous? Do you think there'll be more? family get-togethers, or are we just going to go back to the status quo? I think people are itching to get back to the status quo at this point. Nobody cares about things being a little bit nicer. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. We've talked to um, – so we got this crazy idea to do interviews, and we've managed to talk to, like, eight or nine people so far. Um, I, I think for the arts, there's going to be a change. Um, this Zoom thing seems to be a, a new avenue. But, yeah, human nature uh, is pretty shitty. I think we'll backslide into our ways pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got to go back to bed. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank I know that's a bleak outlook. <laughs> I got to go back to the fetal position. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. We're 20 miles south of Upbeat Town. Uh, <laughs> right. We're about the obscure, not the upbeat. I know. I know that. I know that. That's why you're having me on. That's Talk right. <laughs> Talk about an obscure career. I begged, begged Pat not to put me on Netflix. <laughs> oh now, now look, what's, look what's happening. I got to go out and do things, and I've got to make posts and stuff like that. And, um, well, I don't think I'll be able to do a live gig till 2030, so I better get mm. used to it. Now, you, uh, you had your own podcast, too, for a while, right? Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, Banana Land. Oh, yeah, I went to check that out, and there's a there's a uh, like a highlight clip, but the episodes were gone. Oh, it's there now. Oh, nice. Yeah, if you want to check it out later, um, yeah, there's the Banana Land's greatest moments, which you can find at uh, the website, and uh, you guys know what that is, don't you? Yeah. Don't say it. Don't say it. I didn't come here to shamelessly plug anything. <laughs> oh, we're all about shamelessly plugging. No, no, no. I just came here to show, show my, no, no, my new team of managers that I can show up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what derailed me in Hollywood all those years ago, man. No, actually, that's not true. I showed up for everything, man. Hollywood's a, well, it's a lovely, sincere, friendly town. Heartwarming <laughs> and consistent, right? Consistent. Heartwarming, and it's the number one. Uh, the uh, it's the number one city in the world for fluffy clothing. <laughs> that actress, by the way, if you want to look her up on IMDb, her name is Fawn Bafferton. Fawn like the deer? Nope. Fawn like Prell shampoo. <laughs> oh my god gentlemen start your backyard carnivals here we go 
We're going to help people out. We're going to raise a little bit of money. We're going to put a dime in that circle, and we're going to shoot an apple off of your head. But first, let me go grab an axe and kill everyone in line. <laughs> That's what I miss as a child. Remember that? <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I grew up in the uh, in the seventies. You know, where you could where you could get away with that. It was you know, it was a it was a much gentler time, more more playful nature. I think really, you know. When you could go around wielding an axe and everybody thought that was funny. I actually I remember uh, playing with a group of friends when I was a kid and we were, I don't know, we were playing cops and robbers or something, yelling help. And one of the kids' mothers made us say peanut butter instead of help so that we wouldn't upset other adults. Didn't have the same ring to it. Oh, my God. Not <laughs> terrible. <laughs> but it the does remind me of this number from The Sound of Music. Edelweiss. Edelweiss in the mo Never mind, guys. Can I hear that? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. I was spacing out. Can I hear it one more time? Something about peanut butter and your mom. Oh, yeah. Friend's mother, uh, if we were yelling help when we were doing make-believe, she wanted to hear peanut butter instead of the word help. Oh, oh okay. I got you. Yeah, which uh, made no sense to us. <laughs> Nobody like comes running if you yell peanut butter. Peanut butter, peanut butter, the princess is stuck in the tower. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Make one hell of a, of a Mario game, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Night to the round table and jelly sandwich for lunch. <laughs> so I guess our, our only hard-hitting question for you, because here we're all about having fun here, but um, I guess I should ask. So, um, Bob, where have you been for the, for the last 10 years? What's that? Where have you been for the last 10 years? Preparing for this show, for this broadcast. I wanted to come off as professional sounding as I could. It all started <laughs> in a 5,000 watt radio station in Fresno, California. Do you recognize that at all? Am I going to? Might... That was. Uh, yeah, that'd be for our time. <laughs> that was Ted Baxter. Oh my God, from the Mary Tyler Moore show. Mary Tyler Moore, yeah. Show. You know, I didn't come here to do impressions. I never went anywhere with <laughs> impressions, to be honest with you. Where have I been the last 10 years? Yeah. Well, uh, I was, I was um, playing a gig in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, I forget the name of the city. It might have been Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, and this woman came up to me after a show, and she said, um, I'm a doctor, and... Uh, I can see after your performance, but I just want to tell you that I think it's pretty obvious that you suffer from bipolar mania. And I said, uh, okay, tell me something I don't know. Would you like me to sign, pick, uh, sign something? <laughs> uh, uh, a little bit cocky, but people ask you for a signature after a show. Yep. I signed something, all right. Next thing you know, I'm in a lockdown facility in the middle of uh, Norman, Oklahoma, and uh, I spent – eight years being tested different drugs while watching uh, nature documentaries. And uh, here I am. I've come out on the other end with my own special. Ladies and gentlemen, is this the comeback story of the pandemic? Is it the biggest story of the pandemic? I don't know, but let's check in with Norm Lefty Rosenfeld, the greatest comic to come out of the 1918 pandemic. Remember Lefty's slogan, how's your possum? This woman kept me locked down for eight years. Um, and uh, one thing I've noticed about nature documentaries, mm -hmm. none of them are scored with marching band music. Not one. I think we're missing out there. Which, did I tell you about the time I partied with uh, John Philip Sousa? I told <laughs> no. Yeah, that's how far back I go. Uh, you know, I said, I, I told him, I said, look, I got enough blow for you and me, not for your entire fucking tuba section. <laughs> I never said that. I don't know. John says differently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. okay. So you, now you're going over the quotes that you got from him, are you? Well, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> that was our last episode. <laughs> they interviewed Sousa without telling me. <laughs> I like we were that. thinking of doing this is your life but you know we got our own things <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. hey i like uh i like your show i bought all your t-shirts thanks for having me 
<laughs> we appreciate you coming on. Um, so, uh, so you have your like special. That sounds like a closer. <laughs> that does. It does. Um, so we'll uh, we'll ask you, you. You have your special on Netflix now. Um, anything coming up? In I mean, it, we're in a pandemic, so it's hard to say. But uh, well, anything like, we're going to see you in next? I'd like to talk about my new special coming out. Do dogs know it's Saturday? And it's a wonderful, wonderful special for children and people that are on heavy doses of lithium. And it's also for people that like very vivid colors and cloud formations. And that's coming out on the All Hands Network this fall. And it's the, uh, it's the first comedy special to be scored with Jewish rock music. You're familiar with Christian rock. But <laughs> Sons of rabbis. <laughs> awesome. We're looking forward to that. <laughs> what was the question? What am I doing now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you, uh, besides talking to us? <laughs> well, I uh, pretty much just sit around wolfing down carbs and watching the natural over and over again. <laughs> Little Robert Redford for these troubling times. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. A little Bobby Redford. It's like in, uh, I don't know if you remember that movie, but that's what's like in that scene. Um, have you guys seen the movie? Uh, I, I have. It's been a long, long time since I've seen it. Oh, he gets sidetracked. He's the natural. He's the greatest pitcher that ever lived. And he takes a train to the big city for the first time, meets a, a woman and, uh, she calls him down into her hotel room and she says, Roy, will you be the best there ever was? And he says, that's right. Then she gives him a virus and he starts a pandemic and he doesn't get back to baseball for 16 years. <laughs> and I think that's why I watch it. Cause I just sit here going 16 years, 16 years. I can't wait that long. No, no. We got things no. to do. <laughs> Status quo. Not really. Not really. But, uh, <laughs> I, I don't I don't think I think people are doing Zoom shows, but you can't do that. You can't do stand up comedy in a Zoom show. No, no. We were talking to uh yeah, actually it was a Colin Mockery, um, and they said they were trying to to come up with a way to do improv on Zoom and um I just I I don't see it working. Uh, you need an audience. Yeah. 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 You need an audience. Uh for instance, let's try it right now. Okay, I need a, um, I'm looking for an occupation. Gynecologist. No, no, that's not the one I've prepared. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See, it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> My gynecologist, by the way, good guess. <laughs> you tried. That's why I got in show business. He's a, a gynecologist and a magician. <laughs> That's a deadly combo. <laughs> a mystifying gyno. Boy, the things I used to see him pull out. Unbelievable. Baby, <laughs> rabbits, flowers. One time he pulled out the whole nine yards. The entire hospital went bananas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Bob, I want to thank you the very, very much. Um, out of control right now, man. The heat index is off the chart right now. <laughs> that's the problem uh i think that yeah the heat index is just too much right now i think you should explain to all your listeners that we are uh under very humid conditions right now and i'm not used to it uh, living out in la for i don't know a gajillion years now i'm not used to it but i'm not in la right now no 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 uh, oddly enough, uh, well, I wasn't going to say this. It was going to be a surprise, but I'm 30 miles south of Boston right now. <laughs> I'm going to well, drive this 10 miles, and we're going to roll tonight, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> it's you and me and St. Pauli. <laughs> well, we look forward to it. We're having a campfire tonight. Uh, we'll we'll keep the we'll keep the coals going for you. Are you, getting um, a, are you. are you doing a lot of shows during the pandemic? Yeah, surprisingly, uh, yeah, we went from uh, doing none to we've just, I, I think you're the 10th person that we've talked to um, just in the last two weeks, so.
This is exciting. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you dreamed about, you know, if you got a Netflix special. Yeah, I never yeah. thought, I, if you told me that I'd be talking to uh, the comedian, uh, even two weeks ago, if you told me I'd be doing this, I probably would have left. Yeah, I said, uh, look, those guys that are, this is years ago, man. I said, those guys that are 20 miles south of Boston, you think they'll, and it did, it happened that fast. Show's been out. The show has been out. Uh, oh, I, you know, I did a show on Netflix. It's been out, what, 10 days? Yeah, 10 days. And uh, Yeah, 10 days. Yeah, I uh, just ordered some new shorts off of uh, Amazon. So, uh, you know, it's turning things around faster than <laughs> I thought. We're here. We're on a summertime podcast. Living life and, and just trying to make it through these times. Yeah. We're trying to make it through a pandemic. I think we're doing good. I, you know, th <laughs> we're going to come out of this okay. You don't believe that, do you? Um, today I do, yes. <laughs> Tomorrow I won't. <laughs> Tomorrow neither one of you will? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> well, then, yeah. let's sing the Happy Thoughts song. Happy, happy, joy, joy. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> well, Bob, I want to thank you uh, very, very much for uh, coming out and talking to us today. We we really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thank you. Well, I want to thank you guys for having me, and uh, you know, we'll do it again sometime. I think we should do it once things go back to normal. You know, because then, like I said, uh, it'll be a chance for the uh, the uh, fluid and the recesses of my mind to coalesce and function normally and. Well, can I say everything atrophies, not just the uh, body, but the mind too. And, uh, you know, uh, I hope at least everybody's get is getting uh, rested, well rested, you know? Yeah, no, there's definitely no shortage of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully once things are good and normal, um, you know, and if you're out there doing your thing, um, we'd be happy to promote that as much as possible. Oh yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, well, like I said, once the earth opens back up, I'll definitely be doing some shows in that area. We'll have to make it up. Ooh. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bob. Uh, we got to roll in person. We'll have some fun. Uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs>